And it's right now 8.30 in the Tennessee Valley, and it's time for Inside Oakwood with Dr. Leslie Pollard. We're going to be uh, joined by five guests from Oakwood University. And Dr. Pollard, good morning to you. How are you doing hey, today? Good morning. Oh, wait. Good morning, Donna. Good morning. There we go, Dr. Pollard. How are you doing this morning? I am doing fine. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you had a great weekend. I did have a great weekend, although I thought it was going to be spent uh, watching the, the football game, the Super Bowl, but I didn't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it's good to let those things pass, right? <laughs> I didn't miss it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's good to let those things pass. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's a blessing to be here on this beautiful morning in Tennessee Valley. It's probably about 36, 37 degrees for our listeners. Um, but we are grateful that we're here this morning, and we're always excited to talk about what's happening inside Oakwood, and that's always great to great great to hear and great to have our guests this morning. I think this is going to be really a phenomenally inspirational and informational broadcast. I really do. I think this is one of those. Oh, yes. I, I agree. I'm ready. I'm excited because I've already got questions from some listeners, too, who are very Oh, interested. good, 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 good. So, so share with us what Oakwood University is doing uh, to help the sick and feed the home. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, some of what we're doing, and I'm going to set it up by showing a video clip, but some of what we're doing actually comes from Matthew chapter 25, where, um, you know, in, in the parable of the sheep and the goats, that's a very famous parable and the goat here is not the greatest of all time the goats are the bad guys in this in this parable they're not the, the greatest of all time but 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 one of the things jesus says and this was one of dr king's during black history month i think we should say it this is one of dr king's favorite parables because he often talked about it he says then the king will say to those matthew chapter 25 verse 34 come you blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Right? I did find a Valentine's gift. In I don't know what I that is. Do, uh, so I, went to so I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Oh, wow. And uh, let me just make sure that that goes away, everybody. Okay, thank you. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was hungry and you gave me food. He says, now he says, now he says, he says, come, come. I was naked. And then the righteous say, well, we, we don't know what you're talking about. We, we, we never did that. And then he says this. He says, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, you have done it unto me. Mm. That's an amazing and amazing, Open that's an amazing mercy. parable. That's an amazing parable. So when I think about that, I think about some of the work that we're going to be doing in the community. He says, what you've done for the least, the underserved, you've done it for me. And so I want to share this video clip just to cap off this devotional and then to go right into our exciting conversation with our very, very inspirational and committed guests this morning. So let me just share screen and hope this technology all works, right? Because that's always, that's always what we're trying to do. We're always trying to get it to work. So, so let's, see, let's see what we got here. Did it come up? I don't see it yet, but I know it's coming. Okay, let me try this one and then let's go. Let's see there what we, we go. Come okay. Up. Here we go, everybody. Here we are. And local organizations have teamed up to keep Huntsville healthy one stop at a time. The campus officially launched its mobile market today. Our Kanisha Deeds has the details on how leaders are working to serve underserved communities. Northwoods Housing Community is the first stop along the route for Oakwood University's mobile market. They hope to address the issue of food insecurity and food deserts. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has indicated that there are certain zip codes, this being one of them, that are food deserts. Oakwood University leaders hope to close the gap for lack of fruit and veggies in Northwest Huntsville. Their goal, accessibility and affordability with the launch of their new mobile market. But that's not all they have in store. As part of their Healthy Campus and Healthy Community initiative, they're in the construction phase of a new facility. We're now in phase two. Phase two is our community health action center. And on this side will be a community health action clinic. Activities include cooking classes and ways to reverse diabetes. Student ambassadors will work both at the community health action center and the mobile market. Also a former resident, I grew up in the community and I knew that um, there's a lack of affordable fresh fruits and vegetables. Oakwood University partnered with the Huntsville Housing Authority and the Community Action Association 
region of Alabama. The Northwoods housing community is one of six stops total. The mobile market will run bi-weekly, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 1 to 3.30 p.m. This is a great idea. This is a great concept, bringing affordable items that will hopefully help residents become more healthy. This is, this is just absolutely great. And Oakwood University plans to open their community health action center by this June. Putting the Valley first, Kenesha D's WZDX News. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And all of these players are here this morning. Uh, yeah, so, so Mr. Tony McGinnis is here, who you saw in the video. Dr. Prudence Pollard, who you heard in the video. Uh, of course, uh, and then we've got our health ambassadors here. We've got Mr. Ray King, we've got Ms. Lisa Dow, Dr. Lisa Dalrymple, who is here. Uh, our health ambassador, Roddy. Uh, Rodley, how do you pronounce, how do you, and would you unmute please, Rodley? Just pronounce your name in full. I wanna make sure we get it right. Yes, it's uh, Rodley Point Du Jour. Okay, Rodley Point Du Jour, point of the day. So thank you, thank mm -hmm. you, the beginning of the day. And then uh, Dr. Lisa Dalrymple, who's our director for Healthy Campus, Healthy Community. Um, so this is gonna be a great, I hope I didn't miss anybody. Mr. Ray King, who oversees our student ambassadors, cause I don't see everybody on my screen, but that doesn't mean they're not there. And uh, so, so we're grateful. So let's go. Let's talk about what it means to engage with partners in the improvement of our community. Yes, that's a great place to start because that's where my questions were coming from our listeners. Partnerships. Let's talk about those partnerships. Okay, so, so this morning, this morning, uh, I want to just talk a little bit about why, and, and just for the benefit of our listeners, so why is Oakwood going beyond the borders of its campus? What does it mean to have a community health action center? Why is the Northwest important, the area in which we are serving? Dr. Prudence Pollard did quite a bit of research before submitting the grant um, to help fund our mobile market. And just understanding the nature of our community based upon the data sets that were uncovered, it, it, it was a phenomenal learning for those of us who have been here. Now this year, Oakwood will celebrate 125 years in this community. But there were so many things about this community that now the modern community that we have to know about and learn. So Dr. Prudence, could you say a little bit to us about just the demographics, some of the statistical discoveries that were made as we thought about this part of Huntsville, Alabama where Oakwood sits so squarely? Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this was envisioned in 2013. Uh, so Healthy Campus, Healthy Community uh, began in 2015 with the on-campus uh, component where our student health ambassadors trained by Mr. Ray King and launched by Dr. Dalrymple and the previous directors uh, was drafted in a plan. It is a response to the comorbidities facing African-Americans within this region of the country. Uh, the top five comorbidities, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. If you have one, you're likely to have at least one other of the comorbidities. And these are disabling. So you couple that with health disparities, lack of access to health care. And when you look at the lack of uh, access to health care to address these very expensive and debilitating comorbidities, we saw something else within the zip code of 35816 and spanning out from that. What we saw was not only the health disparities that mimic our campus that were on that we see on our campus among African Americans, but we also see job insecurity. We see income disparities. What that means is we're selling the message of health. We are taking health into the community. That's our town and gown. Most universities build fabulous buildings. We said we want the economy around us, the people around us to thrive. And so that's our town and gown. To address health disparities, we must address food insecurity and job insecurity. So all of that works together in our public health and community health model. Wow, and since we're talking about working together, we know this is part of the Healthy Campus 2021 as well. That's why Dr. Lisa Del Rempel is on. Can you tell us about how you're working along with this program? 
Sure. So we are continuing our efforts to ensure that our campus remains healthy and we're in the sustainability phase of that. But um, in addition to that, as was stated, phase two addresses the needs of the community. And so in working collectively with my colleagues here on campus and then building the partnership with our stakeholders in the community, uh, this has led us to join with them to ensure that we're bringing the best to our community members. And as Dr. Uh, Pollard mentioned, a lot of these comorbidities that our residents are facing can be directly, it seemed to be directly related to diet. And so when we see that, and of course the COVID pandemic has exacerbated what has already been present. And so this service, this initiative, it could not have start at a better time that we can bring these resources to our community members and making food accessible, not only food, but healthy and affordable food accessible to our, our community members. So we're excited um, what we've started with the response from the community members. We are just happy to be there and be present. So the Community Health Action Clinic and the Oakwood Mobile Market are working together. So that's that's a partnership internally, but we're working with community as well. And that's why we have uh, Mr. Tony McGinnis here, I guess, to talk about how we're partnering with the community. Mr. McGinnis, can you tell us about the partnership and why uh, the uh, you are with the uh, executive director of the Huntsville Housing Authority and share with us why it's so important for you guys to be involved in this. Well, first of all, I just want to thank Oakwood University for selecting the Housing Authority. I think this is going to be a tremendous partnership. Oftentimes, the true inner city gets overlooked. And I'm so excited about it because I know that this is going to be a benefit to the residents that we serve. Oftentimes, we, have, um, we don't have as much access to affordable fruits and vegetables, and this will give our residents an opportunity to be able to walk outside, get on a bus, and get fruits and vegetables. And I think that is a tremendous um, response to the community, and it'll give our residents, again, an opportunity to provide healthy alternatives for their uh, families. Wow. So Dr. Pollard, this is going to grow. It has room to grow into even something larger. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Was, was that my computer? <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, I, I lost the back screen now. Um, so, so colleagues, yes, yes, absolutely. To, to, to your question specifically, um, part of our launching of Oakwood Farms was also with a vision toward the community. The launching of Healthy Campus Phase Two takes us into the community, so it's actually HC squared, right? Healthy Campus, Healthy Community. Yes. Um, so, so yes, and and part of the the reason for the, the 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 modicum of a fee is so that we can continue to recycle and sustain the service, locally grown, chemically free fruits and vegetables, um, that our 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 clients, our personnel, our community in the three five eight, and you start going through the sixes, right? Eight oh six, eight one six, eight nine six that our people just don't have access to because they're in these areas that have been designated by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as food deserts, meaning they don't have public transportation and they're at least, many of our residents are at least one mile away from a supermarket. So we can take the service to them. I mean, it's an idea whose time has come. And the city has actually committed, Mayor Battle and his office have committed to giving us another vehicle so that we can multiply our efforts and expand them and cover more territory more efficiently. So we're very grateful for this. You know that my African proverb that we often quote, Donna, says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm. And but by going with, with, uh, with Brother Tony McGinnis and with Huntsville Housing Authority and by going with community partners, we can do much more together. We mm. actually can. And we can also do much more because we're involving our students as well. Mr. King, can you talk about that ambassador program and how our students will be uh, involved in this? And then we can talk to and hear from Rodley as well, who is going to share with us his experience. Mr. King, you're, you're still muted. <laughs> Ariel, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Great, great. Well, this is a exciting um, adventure for our students. Um, our health ambassador program is basically health peer 
advocates on campus. Um, there are eight, eight, I'm sorry, there are health principles that we're teaching them, the Healthy Campus Standout Principles, which were developed by students for students. So our ultimate goal is for them to start sharing this information, not only on campus, but out in the community. Um, you know, in front of our campus, there's two signs that says, enter to learn, depart to serve. We might need to change a little bit to, to say enter to learn while serving, <laughs> departing to serve. So now they have an opportunity to serve our community using their, their um, health principles, um, healthy campus, standout principles. And not only they're showing it on campus once again, but they also get a chance to show it to our community. I think this is a great opportunity for our students to know what service learning is about giving back to our community um, and also be able to share that information. Um, I don't think they understand how important that is until they actually leave Oakwood and go out into the community and start experiencing what some of these health um, challenges that we have. But now we get a chance for them to actually show and come back to campus and spread the word about what's going on on the bus, the people that they meet, the testimonies they're going to receive. Mm -hmm. So this is a exciting program for our students. Um, I'm excited. Um, we've already seen some of our health ambassadors at work. Um, Rodley is one of them, and I'm pretty sure he can share his experience with everyone. Yeah, I, I am so excited. I want to hear about the experience because I think this is so different maybe from some of the other opportunities for service learning that our students have had in the past. And this has had so many other layers. So Rodley, point du jour, could you share with us your experience as a student ambassador and uh, what your involvement really looks like? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so far, my experience has been uh, really great. Um, I pretty much started off, you know, uh, just like planning to get ready for the launch of the farmer's market and just uh, making sure we have everything. So like earlier last week, uh, I helped with doing inventory for the mobile market. And then the next day came in, uh, took part in, this, in the launch ceremony. And then we were just there after everything was over from like 12 to two, just uh, having people in the community come and be able to buy some fruits and vegetables. Now, um, it was like, it was really cold outside that day. So <laughs> I think that's probably why a lot of people didn't come, but I know that there was like a, a soft opening that happened uh, in December and there were quite a few people that came. So I'm very excited about this because I, like, you know, like, like it's been stated already, you know, there are food deserts in Huntsville and people who don't have access to good quality fruits and vegetables. Because a lot of these stores, they, you know, spray their vegetables their produce with something or it's you know grown the wrong way pretty much yeah and so it's exciting to be able to bring something that's quality to residents who may not have access to better things so that in order for them to better their own health and also be able to educate them on ways that they can use these fruits and vegetables to to cook some really good meals Wow. Well, you know, I'm going to come back to you because I got another question for you. But I, before we get off of partnerships, I wanted to ask a question that one of our listeners had um, about what other partnership opportunities are available, because there are people out there who are patronizing the Oakwood Farms market and they are making their meals for their small businesses. Uh, what is there an opportunity for vendors to be on the uh, mobile market to sell maybe soups or things that are made out of the fruits and vegetables that are on the mobile market uh, bus? Mobile, yeah. Who we appreciate that question, uh, Donna. That's an excellent question, obviously from someone who cares about the, our community. Um, uh, just give it a little background. Uh, the mobile market, um, the goal of the mobile market is to take uh, whole foods, 
fruits and vegetables into the community because of the relationship to, of course, the health disparities. And we can develop that a little bit more uh, later on. Uh, but uh, we are financed, as uh, our president just indicated, by donations. Uh, so it's donations uh, that help us to sustain uh, this uh, initiative. Uh, so both the revenue from the low cost um, uh, fruits and vegetables, as well as donations from our caring partners will help us to um, move this forward. So if there are farmers out there who have fruits and vegetables that they would like to donate to this initiative, please reach out, contact us, contact Dr. Dalrymple. Uh, we will develop a partnership with your farm. You don't have to give fruits and vegetables. You could also give cash, a cash donation, uh, and uh, we will advance that. Please keep in mind, this is a mobile market. Our purpose is to serve areas that are experiencing health disparities, job insecurity, and food insecurity. Uh, this is not Oakwood Farms Market. Okay, we encourage our population to frequent Oakwood Farms Market with its wonderful outdoor pavilion and its um, likewise healthy uh, food options and also the lovely bistro that is there. But this is a particular service uh, that we take to the community. And of course, within the Community Health Action Center, we will have additional services there. But but we're caring, as our president said, for the least of these, but we don't restrict our service to the least of these. So anyone coming up to the mobile market will be served regardless of where you reside. Wow, that, I think that's very clear. So you're not, you're not uh, providing uh, prepared foods. None of that. It's just the fresh fruits and vegetables that are available. You will not be providing soups or salads or things like that. And they can go to the Oakwood Farms Market for those types of things. But if they wanted to donate, if, like you said, if you're a farmer, they want to donate, they can donate uh, money or fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables. And I'm sure you're very strict about how they're, they're raised, <laughs> the food. <laughs> they, are, they must be pesticide free. Yes. Uh, so we do want to take the best to our community uh, because often even when if they have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, it may not be the healthiest. Right, right. So I want to get back to uh, Rodley now because, and, and anyone can respond to this, I really want to know, I haven't been out there, I'm going to try to get out there today because I would like to know how the communities are receiving this service that we're providing in their communities because um, we're going to be over at uh, Butler Terrace today at one o'clock and but you've been out there already. How have the communities received, the individuals getting on the bus, how have they received this service? Um, well, for what well, I haven't seen that many since my first time actually was last week. But for those that I did see come through, um, they they were very they're very excited and happy to see like the different fruits and vegetables on the bus and just being able to have all those things available. Like one of the customers that came, I remember overhearing them, you know, asking their daughter, you know, they should take some things to one of their neighbors and stuff like that. So it's it's really cool um, that people can come and take stuff for themselves and also take things for their families and friends as well. All right. Anybody else want to respond to that? Any experience we have so far? I know it's very new. We're at the very beginning. But... <laughs> <laughs> I can say something. Yes, okay. um, yeah. Being on the bus and um, the beautiful thing is seeing their faces once they once first when the bus pulls up. <laughs> you know, everyone's trying to figure out what is this bus? What are they doing? And then when they come on the bus and see the selections of the fruits and vegetables, and then to know that affordable prices, they really seem surprised. And you can see when they bring their friends up and they're walking out the bus with their bags, they're like, I got all this for this amount with these, these are my bags, you know, sometimes we have to help them down the stairs by taking their bags because they have so much and they did not have a clue that it would be so fresh, but also so affordable. So just seeing their reactions and knowing that it's for them is such a blessing. 
Wow. Yeah, I, I, it, it, Mr. King uh, and Riley stated it perfectly, the surprise. I think that's the biggest, um, that, that is what you want to see when you know that we have worked so hard to bring something like this to our community members because we care for them and to see how they receive it with excitement and appreciation um, that makes it all the more joyful to provide these services in each of the communities that we've had the opportunity to visit as of last week. Um, it's been all the same. They can't believe that this is for them. They're, they're you know, hoping that it's not a one-time thing. And then when we tell them, no, this is a bi-weekly schedule that will be on, you'll see us again. Um, they are just excited and they're putting in their orders. Well, can you get some pineapples? Will we get some watermelon? <laughs> and so we're, we're telling them, you know, as the season change, we will have it available for you. We will have so many um, beautiful variety of options available for you. So I just wanted to make a correction really quick, uh, Mrs. Baker. So we will not be out this week. It's a bi-weekly schedule. On last week, we provided services to our community members. So next week, we will be out, out um, and about. And so our schedule is on the Healthy Campus website, as well as we have provided the schedule to our community members, the six that we are um, visiting, our property managers, they have that schedule where it's posted in the community. They're using their various social media uh, outlets to provide these um, schedules to residents. And so we're making sure that everyone is aware of when we will be back out. So next, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we will be back out in the community. Wonderful. I'm glad you caught that because a lot of people probably be out there looking for the bus. <laughs> Donna, we'd like to share our other partners. Yeah. Of course, uh, Huntsville Housing Authority is represented by Mr. McGinnis. May we have an opportunity to tell the good news of our other partners? Okay. There yes. Are so just a, just a roll call, very quickly, very quickly. Um, the American Heart Association for Health Education, uh, the, uh, the Alabama Obesity Task Force on which I sit, uh, the state of Alabama through Governor Ivey's office and the grant uh, that led to this particular mobile market, um, the uh, Community Action Partnership uh, led by Mrs. Dolores Mastin, uh, the city of Huntsville, our mayor, as the president said, is donating our second mobile market. And let me also mention our local bank, bb and Truist has donated a transport vehicle so the health ambassadors can get to the six locations and do their work. So I just want to say thank you to those partners. We have other partners that are coming on board by spring. I will not reveal their names right now. Um, we will reveal that at the appropriate time. Wow, that's a wonderful long list of partnerships. Just shows how, you know, the university is working together with the community at large. And that's really, really nice. So also, you know, we, before we move on, because we are running out of time, it's affordable. The fruits and vegetables are affordable and it, they're easy to purchase because you accept different forms of payment, right? Can somebody speak to that really quickly before we get out of here? Sure, we definitely want to ensure that everyone is able to purchase uh, the affordable foods that we have on this vehicle. And so we accept EBT, we accept uh, through our partnership with uh, Community Action Partnership, garden vouchers, we accept cash, and of course, uh, credit cards, any major credit card. So again, this is allowing any and everyone to be able to uh, purchase these healthy food options. Now, when, we, when someone was talking about uh, the uh, the patrons coming off so excited, that's because it was so affordable. Is it like 60%? How, how much less is it? I, I don't want to get that wrong. 30 to 60% less. Wow. Wow. That's amazing, Dr. But the quality is not less. That's one thing that we want to share. The quality is the same or even better, I might add, I might state. But um the, the, the prices are definitely affordable to allow everyone to be able to purchase. Wow. All right, Dr. Pollard. Well, hey, again, I, 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 thank, I thank each of our guests this morning. Thank each of them for what they're doing to serve our community. And, I, and I, I cannot help but during this Black History Month, remember Dr. King's 
very famous commitment to Matthew chapter 25, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. The least is not, doesn't mean that people are least in quality because we know that we're all equal as human beings, but often people who have, who, who have least access to resources, persons who often have the least um, services brought to them. It's, it's this group that we are trying to reach and to make sure that all the best that is enjoyed on the king's table can be also on theirs. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing and I'm very grateful and I think it's just a wonderful initiative. And again, it illustrates Oakwoods University's commitment to building our community and to making sure that where we sit, that there is a difference because we are here. You know, uh, Donna, someone said most institutions, if they went away, the community would never miss them. Mm -hmm. I would never want that said about Oakwood University. If something ever happened, God forbid, to Oakwood University, I'd want people to say, we certainly miss what those people used to do for us because they cared about us. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do, use love to make a difference in our community. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Pollard. We enjoy talking about how the Oakwood University is getting in the community, serving the hungry, and we'll be serving the sick way at the clinic. So thank you so much and all of your guests for being with us for another edition of Inside Oakwood with Dr. Leslie Pollard. We'll see you again next week.